Dímelo, mi gente! Welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, my name is Diana. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to snatch that face, how to snatch that jaw, those cheekbones, that nose. So if you're interested on learning on how to contour or just, you know, seeing how I got this look, then keep on watching. Uh, but before we start, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment, you guys. Comment. Tell me if you like the look. Tell me what videos you want to see. Tell me what color socks you wear. Just comment down below. I love reading your comments and seeing what you guys think. Okay, guys. So I'm going to speed through the face and talk through the contour part. Starting with our MAC Lip Balm SPF 12, shade Purring. Then we're going to prime with the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. Next, using the Farsali Skin Tune Blur to blur our imperfections and hydrate our skin a little bit. For eye primer, we're using the Amazing Cosmetics Line Smoother. It has little metal balls. They feel so good on the eyes. For color corrector, we're going to go in with the Fave Peach Corrector by LA Girl. Using the Luxie Tool and the brush to blend it out. So everything is nice and blended with our Sigma 3D sponge. Now our Fenty Beauty Powder in the shade Banana to lightly set the corrector. For foundation, Maybelline Super Stay in 128 Nude with our Juno & Co. sponge. That sponge has little microfiber bristles on it, so it's not supposed to absorb any of the product. I really like it so far, but I'll give you guys a more in-depth review when I get to try it more. Using our MB10 brush from Morphe, I'm going to apply a little bit of the NARS Soft Matte Concealer in the shade Custard. So let's go in with cream contour first. Using the Anastasia foundation stick in the shade Make. Cream contour, you guys may know already that I don't like to go in directly with the product to my face. Just because I feel like after a short while, foundation sticks like this just start to get a little bit dry. So I prefer to apply it onto a brush or a sponge and then go in. Always start with a small amount and if you need more, just add more. So when I'm contouring my cheeks, um, a tip that like a lot of people give is to make a, like a fishy face and I find that when I mean I do do that but I find that when I just put the contour here in the indentation of my cheekbone it just gets a little bit lower than I like so a tip that I'll give you guys that has helped me out a lot is instead of putting the contour right here I start actually on my cheekbone. This is my Real Techniques Insta Pop Cheek Brush. I love this brush for contour, you guys, just because I feel like the shape of it does most of the work for you. So I do recommend this. You can pick this up, get this. So starting there where my actual cheekbone is, I'm going to go in just lightly stamping in the product. Not swiping, just tapping it in. And with the brush, as you're tapping it in, moving around in a very, very controlled area. So just this right here. The brush will blend it out for you. So the reason I do both cream contour and powder contour is just because my skin is very oily. So after a few hours, if I just do one, my oils will seep through a little bit in my makeup and kind of break it down so you can't really see it anymore. That's why I prefer to do both. But you can always do one or the other depending on your skin type. I recommend if you have dry skin, use cream contour. But if you have oily skin, you can do both or use the uh, powder option. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more just because I like a very chiseled cheekbone. And as I'm blending in the contour on my cheekbone, I extend the brush here into my hairline just so everything blends in nice and seamlessly. Now let's contour our big old forehead. When contouring my forehead, I like to blend up because if you blend down, it can create a muddy effect and just make your contour look all messed up. So just blend up to avoid that. If you ever feel like you've got too much on, too much of your cream contour, just take the same foundation brush or sponge that you use and you can go over it to correct it a little bit. You could do that right here underneath our cheekbone to clean it up and also a top of our forehead contour to make it blend in better. When I do my jaw contour, I make sure not to bring it any lower than my natural already. As you can see, I got a little going on right there. So what I do is I just take it from about this part, like where my jawline begins, and all the way underneath, with just raising it just a little bit. I don't like to bring my contour down too low because then you could see it and that don't look good. And once again, this brush, like this brush, is just is doing it. Been contouring for the longest time, you guys, for the longest time. Since I started doing makeup when I was like 15. And when I was younger, yo, I used to contour so freaking hard. Remember my cousin told me when I was younger, she was like, you look like you just got punched in the face. And I would be like, I like it. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna put um, some of the contour just like right here, right under my kiha. The whole point of contour and highlighting is to create shadows. The deeper the shadow is right here, the less it's gonna protrude in the light. So that way it's hidden. When choosing your cream contour shade, if you have a warm undertone, make sure that you get a cream contour on the warmer side or on the neutral side so that it blends in better with your skin tone. And now let's move on to our nose. When you're placing your nose contour, you wanna get the lines as straight and as close as possible. That's what's gonna create for the appearance of a smaller nose. If you put the lines further down here, it's gonna just make your nose look wider. I put two lines just down the sides. I try to put them not extremely close because as I blend it out, they're just gonna get a little bit closer. So I put it right here on the side. And then I put a little bit above the tippy tip because that creates for a more lifted effect. Oh, and I put some right here. Okay, so now with my clean brush, I'm going to blend that out and try to keep it in the same place as best as I can. Right here under my lip because I feel like it makes it look like really pouty and cute. And also right here in the middle of my cupid's bow. Okay, now that we're done with our cream contour, we can move on to concealer. When choosing a concealer to highlight, you want to go in with a shade that's about one to three shades lighter than your foundation shade, just so it can create that contrast and actually highlight. We'll be using the KKW Concealer in the shade six. So to brighten, I put it underneath my eyes. I put a little bit right over here on top of my uh, Cupid's bow to help start pout on the tippy tip of my nose and then just halfway down the bridge. I also put a little bit on my chin, a little bit in the middle of my forehead.
blending out the concealer on my forehead I just want to keep it in this center portion not to mess with everything that we did over here above by our hairline with the contour same with our chin just keep it on the very very tip of the chin above our jawline contour and beneath our pout contour for the concealer on my nose, I always like to blend that out with a brush because precision is really important on nose contour. After blending out my nose contour, I'm going to take the same sponge with a little bit of uh, foundation still on it and dab that over the contour just to make sure everything is nice and blended. Cute. Now we're going to set everywhere that I concealed with our Fenty Banana Powder. I'm gonna set the rest of my face with the same powder using our Real Techniques Fluffy 300 brush. Now using our Sigma 3D sponge to bake. The reason I bake is to keep all my makeup in place throughout as long as I'm wearing it, but also to brighten. So I bring in the baking powder right beneath the line of our nose contour just so it blends in perfectly with our under eye highlight and then goes in seamlessly into our nose contour. While we're baking, we're going to move forward and do our powder contour. I like to do the powder contour while I'm baking just because if it doesn't come out perfectly, or if I add too much, as I'm removing my baking powder, it diffuses those contour lines. Oh, and I forgot to bake my nose. For powder contour, I'm going to use my MAC 109 brush and the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. So I'm going to go in with a mixture of these first two shades. Following the same thing that we did with the cream, instead of starting right here in the socket of your cheekbone, just bring it above to the actual cheekbone and it'll naturally blend down where it needs to be. Repeating the steps just like we did with the cream contour. Not swiping back and forth, but tapping in and tapping out and bringing it over here to our temples into our hairline. As you're blending your contour, your bake will disappear a little bit, but that's fine. Using a very little bit for our forehead. Now we're gonna go softly on our jawline. It's not a booger, that's my nose ring. Now for the powder contour on our nose, I'm going to use, it's kind of like the same as my dual ended brush, but just a little bit fluffier. This is the Luxie 213. For my nose contour, I don't ever like to go too warm. So I'm gonna use this shade. It's in the very same spot that we put our cream contour. Using the bake as a guideline. When I do powder, I like to bring it over here up to my brow just because it creates for a more natural looking shadow. Now I'm gonna dust off the bake. Don't inhale powder. <coughs> so as we're removing our bake with very light pressure, I'm making sure to tap it in, which helps blend the contour that we just did with our powder. So very light motion, super light. As you dust off that bake, you can see how seamlessly and nice and blended our contour looks just by removing our bake afterwards. 
Now when we get to the nose, I like to swirl lightly to diffuse any harshness that we might have had. Now last but not least in our contour routine, we're gonna bronze. Bronzing and contouring, they go hand in hand for me. Some people just bronze, some people just contour. If you're doing like an everyday look, like maybe for work or if you're just going shopping, you're not doing full glam, then you could get away with just putting on your bronzer and passing that off as contour. It's gonna make you look nice, it's gonna make you look healthy, and it's gonna make you look chiseled. My favorite bronzer you guys already know is the Marc Jacobs Fantastic Bronzer. I would say it's a little bit cooler on the cooler side in the neutral spectrum, but this is just my favorite bronzer. I feel like the shade is perfect, the formula is perfect. And it better be perfect, honestly, because this is very expensive. For bronzing, you guys already know, I swear by this brush, is the Morphe R7. So I'll just put some color on my bridge. In this step, you're gonna take your brush and you're gonna make a shape in the number three. So you're gonna start here in your cheekbone, working up into your temple and your forehead, and then coming down into your jawline. You could do a separate like work on your cheek and then your forehead and then but this way I just feel like it's nice and blended and seamless and nobody could tell nothing that you have bronzer on. You just look back. For this bronzing step, I do like to make that fishy face because this brush is perfectly tapered. You're not gonna put it on top of your cheekbone. You're going to make your fishy face and put it right here. So the way that the brush is laid, it distributes the product just perfectly. Looks nice and blended. I like to put a lot of bronzer just because I feel like it makes me look really good. As I'm blending up to my forehead, I'm staying as close to my hairline as I can and not bringing it down. Just so it doesn't mess with the concealer that we placed for our highlight up there. While you're doing this step, if you ever feel like you blended your bronzer too low, you can go in with that same sponge that you used to bake and you just cut beneath the contour, let it sit there for a little bit, and brush it off. And that way it creates for a nice clean edge. Okay, now that our contour is all done, I'm gonna finish the rest of my face. To melt everything together, we're gonna use our clean, damp, real technique sponge to absorb any excess powder and prevent cakiness. Now going in with our Morphe Continuous Setting Mist to melt everything together. For highlight, we're using the Huda Beauty 3D Highlighter. This is in the shade Seashells. With our Morphe Y14 brush. For precision highlight, we're gonna use our Morphe M330 brush. Now for blush, we're using the Milani Rose blush in the shade Coral Cove with our Morphe E4 angle brush. For lashes, we're using these Hello Beauty lashes that I got on Amazon and I love them. They're so cute. Gonna do a little brow gel with the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. To line my lips, we're using my favorite BFF2 pencil from ColourPop.
For lipstick, we're using the Anastasia Matte Lipstick in the shade Peachy. Now we're gonna set everything with my favorite of all time, Skin Vinavia Setting Spray for Oily Skin. Let's curl those lashes. Look at that difference. All right, guys, this is our final look. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you found it informative. I hope it helped you learn how to contour and snatch that face. If you guys had a good time with me today and if you learned anything, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and all my social medias as I do a lot of polls on there, guys, to like determine what videos I'm gonna drop next. So please follow me so that I can include your opinion on all of my polls. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.